Good morning, church, on this Lord's Day, the 17th of May, 2020. As we come to our worship service, today's court worship comes from Psalm 27, verse 1 to verse 6. Psalm 27, verse 1 to verse 6 says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? When evildoers came upon me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies, they stumbled and fell. Though a host encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war arise against me, in spite of this, I shall be confident. One thing I have asked from the Lord, that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he shall conceal me in his tabernacle. In the secret place of his tent, he shall hide me. He will lift me up on a rock. And now my head will be lifted up above my enemies around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for this beautiful day you have given us to sit under your presence and learn from you and learn from one another and receive encouragement from each other we pray lord that you will honor you, yourself by being present with us in our different homes as we partake in this service today even as we will come around your table for worship we pray that we may our hearts may be warmed toward you we pray that your grace may reach out to each one of us and cause us, Lord, to live lives that are pleasing to you. But also, Lord, to remove all fear and anxiety. We give you thanks for each one of us. We give you thanks for your church that is even getting stronger, even though we are in quarantine. We bless your name today. Amen.
Good morning, Open Baptist Church. Here are the notices for today. Please contact your home fellowship leaders for virtual Bible studies, ministry opportunities, and fellowship. For prayer and counseling, please contact your Zono elders on the numbers provided. You can also contact Pastor Makanga on 734-832-51. Pray for God's provision for all the people who have lost income and jobs due to the lockdown. Pray for kindness and generosity among us and the communities. The church leadership appeals for donations in cash or kind to minister to needy members and the community in this time of difficulty. During this short time of the service, you are requested to send a short text or WhatsApp message greeting one or two members of the church family. Let us greet one another. Good morning, OBC family. May we stay with Taban and Rane. We are well and blessed and we hope the same is true for you. I'm reminded of the prayer in Psalm 33 verse 22. Have mercy on us, O Lord, just as we hope in you. Let us remain anchored in hope, trusting and believing that through the mercies of God we will not be consumed, but we will see the salvation of the Lord. So stay safe and stay blessed. Bye. Hello, Hello OBC. This is the Mutamai family. I am Mrs. Shabwe Mutamai. I'm Grix Mutamai. I'm Tsepo Mutamai. And the one who's behind the camera is Mabatu Mutamai. Hello. Uh, we send all our love to you and we encourage you to stay in God's love and be compassionate to each other, praying for each other. Hello, Hello OBC. OBC. It's Mike Macon here. And it's Masako Macon. We greet you all in the, in the name, name of, of our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. We miss seeing you all, but we enjoy Sunday services on YouTube and we spend time together at home. As David said in Psalm 23 verse 4, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And we should be encouraged that God is always with us, and we have nothing to fear. We are looking forward to seeing you all again soon. In the meantime, stay healthy and stay safe. God bless you. Bye. Bye. Morning, OBC. This is Peter Moy, and this is my sister, Anna Moy. Uh, we are locked down here in Mogodisane. We thank God for the wonderful messages that we have been receiving from the pastor. It has been a challenging time, all of us, we are locked in, in, the, in our houses, but we know that this time is only for, for a short time. The Bible says the pain may endure through the night, but the joy comes in the morning. Good morning, Good morning church. church. I am Jane. And I'm Becky. Greetings from Extension 10. God bless you so much. We look forward to worshiping with you soon. Remember to stay home, stay safe. Bye-bye. Hi, -bye. We are the Nwandes from Block 8. During this lockdown, we've been encouraged by Psalms 91. And it says, Whoever goes to look for safety, whoever remains under the protection of the Almighty, shall say to him, You are my defender and protector. You are my God in whom I trust. He will keep you safe from all hidden dangers and from all daily diseases. He will cover you in his wings. You will be safe in his care. His faithfulness will defend and protect you. God bless you. Bye. Hello, OBC family. We greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We trust you are safe and you are well kept. Hope to see you soon. Bye. 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 Bye, OBC. We are the And we would like to share a verse with you from Romans 8, verse 38. It reads, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, Neither height or death, neither anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Hope to see you soon, OBC. Hello, OBC Church. This is Craig speaking. Craig Nonda. I'm Nora Nonda. Um, we hope all of you are doing well, and we know that it's a crazy time for all of us, but uh, we should just remain hopeful and optimistic. Just continue to be there for each other. The sending love from this side. Hi! We are the Lindsay family from Trokwain. I'm Bridget. I'm Priscilla. George. I'm Leto. I'm Sandra. Um, we'd like to thank God for protecting us during this COVID time and the OBC family for checking up on us. We hope to see you soon in church. 
um, hopefully sometime soon. See you! Bye! Hello OBC, this is greetings from the Marira family. I'm Shimin, Brian, Ian, Mom, Dad. Hello Church, may Psalm 91 be our portion during this COVID-19 time, especially the verses that say, A thousand may fall to our left hand side and ten thousand to our right, but it shall not come near us. And it also says, there shall no evil befall our tents. May the peace that surpasses all understanding abide by each one of us. We miss you all, BC. Bye. Bye. And now we bring you a special message for a special person. Proverbs 1, 8 to 9 says, Forsake not your mother's teaching. My mom is strong, strong, wise. All M is for the moments we share together. Smart, gentle, outstanding, prayerful, God -altering. dedicated, like O is for your optimism. Philippians 2, 14 says, Do all things without grumbling or questioning. My mom is loving, 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 loving. As much as it's hard to listen to all the chastising, I know it comes from love. She's also a good cook. Really amazing cook. Empathetic. Always thinking of others. Magnificent. Funny. T is for your tenderness. She is kind. The greatest. Compassionate. Harmonious. Beautiful. Brown eyes. Beautiful. She is beautiful. Extremely organized. H is for the happiness you bring. Powerful. And number one supporter. Burning angel. B is for your everlasting love. Strong will be an understatement. Hello. She is hardworking. And R is for the respect I have for you. A warrior will suit you so much better. Superwoman. And she is my mom. And she is my mom. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mama. Happy Mother's Day. 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 To every mom out there. I love you, mommy. Good morning, church. We thank the Lord for the opportunity He has given us to be together on this special day. Every day is the day the Lord has made, and it's always a day in which we rejoice and we are glad in the Lord. I want to seize this opportunity to thank the pastor and the leadership of the church for giving me the opportunity to speak to the body of Christ today. I also want to seize this opportunity to praise the Lord for Pastor Asafa and the wife on the occasion of Pastor Asafa's birthday celebrated recently. We thank the Lord for the wife and the children and we trust that the Lord himself will continually be there for him and his family and the Lord will make his face shine upon you in Jesus name. Amen. The topic that I'm speaking about today is a case of two shadows. It's a topic that I'm speaking on, taking the cue from that which we are seeing around us. And it's a way of encouraging one another. We thank the Lord for Elder Kachaje who shared with us last week on a similar theme. But this is an opportunity for us to continue along the same line. Our scriptures, uh, Psalm 23 verse 4, and also Psalm 91 verse 1. Shall we pray? Glorious Father, I just want to thank you for the joy of being in your vine yard this morning. We give glory unto your holy name for this opportunity we have to share with the body of Christ. Lord, we commit this time unto your hands. We ask for your help. We ask for your guidance. We ask for your leading. And we pray, Lord God Almighty, that you will choose the word yourself and that at the end of the day, it is only your name that will be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I just mentioned, we are talking about a case of two shadows. There are two shadows in the Bible. One shadow is the shadow of death. The other shadow is the shadow of life, and that is the shadow of the Almighty God. In the book of Psalm 23 verse 4, the Word of God talks about one of the shadows. It says, even though I walk throughout the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. 
But the psalmist also speaks in Psalm 91 verse 1. And the Bible says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So in a way, we see the two shadows that are being referred to. The shadow of death and the shadow of life in the Almighty God. When we look at the issue of shadows, we know that a shadow is defined in the dictionary as a dark shape that is usually formed when an object blocks the source of light. Actually, the blockage is what causes a shadow to be formed. The existence of light, the presence of light, is what makes a shadow easily visible. But we can also use the word shadow as a verb. We're told that to shadow a person is to follow them without their knowledge. For example, in government circles, when ministers are appointed, they usually come from the ruling party. But then they are closely monitored and shadowed by a shadow minister. And this shadow minister is usually from the leading opposition party. The shadow minister looks at what the main minister is doing and opposes many of the views of the main minister and tries to proffer what many will consider or at least they as the opposition will consider as better views. But I guess the question that you want to ask yourself at this point, even as we gather on this special day, who is shadowing you? Who is shadowing you? But we also know that a shadow is a type of things to come. And this is what we see in Hebrews chapter 8 verse 5. The Bible also tells us of a case of the brazen serpent in the wilderness. The brazen serpent in the wilderness was a type of Christ. We we'll recall that in the book of Numbers, specifically, the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord. God was unhappy with them. And the Bible says, He sent serpent within their midst. Those who sinned were beaten by the snake. And as Moses cried unto the Lord, wondering how can we get out of this situation, the Lord spoke to Moses and asked Moses to make a brazen serpent and put it on a pole. As the brazen serpent was put on the pole and based on the instruction given, whoever was bitten by the snake and looked at this brazen serpent, they got their healing. And so that was what was done. But we know that even as the brazen serpent was a type of Christ, a time came in scripture when people were now kind of trying to worship this serpent. And the command was given to destroy all those things. Jesus is the only one that can save us. We know that Moses was a kind of deliverer, you know, in the case of the children of Israel when they were in Egypt. He was also a type of Christ. But when we also look at the book of Hebrews, we come to realize that none of the prophets could stand up to the Lord Jesus Christ in rank, in ability, and the divine mission that God had given to them. So basically we are saying, in the almighty God, that is where we can have our hope and our security. But while most shadows are expected to be black, the shadow of the almighty can take a very bright color. It can take a very bright color because it is in that color that the Lord God Almighty shows forth his glory. When we look at the case of Moses on Mount Sinai, God showed forth his glory. When we look at the case of Moses in Exodus chapter 33, from verse 19 and also 21 to 22, we see the Lord hiding Moses in the cleft of the rock and causing his shadow to pass by so that Moses could see a glimpse of the Lord. So we see shadows in this particular light. But don't let us forget 
where we started from. There is a shadow of death. There is a shadow of the Almighty. As we speak, beloved, right now in the world, there is the corona shadow. And the corona shadow is a shadow of death. But the corona shadow is also a type of the evil one. When you consider the havoc that the corona shadow has done, it's a great havoc. It's the angel of death. But we also know that this corona shadow shadows the end times as it presents a type and taste of what the end will look like. The corona shadow cannot be fought with the arm of the flesh. The corona shadow takes no prisoners. Even all over the world, and we have seen cases on TV in the developed world, you see a lot of people rushing now, they want their freedom. They want to go to the beaches. But the truth is, the corona shadow does not take prisoners. And that's why we must look for the shadow that can provide us with the needed salvation and help that we need. The shadow that can give us refuge. In Psalm 23 verse 4, the Bible refers to the shadow of death. In Psalm 107 verse 14, the Bible talks about God bringing his children out from darkness and the shadow of death. In Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 15, the theme is explored by the prophet as the prophet refers to a day of wrath concerning the shadow of death. In Isaiah chapter 30 verse 2, we also see the shadow of Egypt as a shadow that cannot protect any. In fact, the Bible says the end of the shadow of Egypt is a terrible end. And that's why when we put our anchor in Psalm 91 verse 1, that there is a shadow that can protect, that shadow is the shadow of God. The shadow of death cannot protect anybody. The shadow of God is a shadow of protection. And that's what the prophet says in Isaiah 49 verse 2 be. The shadow of God refers to the shadow of his glory. The shadow that shows forth the goodness of God. It was the goodness of God that God showed forth unto Moses in Exodus 3. When he says, my goodness shall pass before you. But the shadow of the Almighty is also a shadow of rest. The Bible says, therefore, remain at rest for the people of God. Beloved, if you are looking for a shadow of rest, a shadow of refuge, the shadow that is your fortress, it is the shadow of the Almighty. In fact, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ to the world, when the prophet Isaiah was looking at that coming in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 1 to 2, and it's something that was recaptured in Matthew chapter 4, verse 6, the Bible says, the people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. The light that has dawned is the shadow of the Almighty. Jesus is the shadow of the Almighty. And we see this point repeated in Luke chapter 1, verse 79. In Psalm 17, verse 8, just to let us know where our hiding place should be. The word of God says, keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. In Psalm 36 verse 7, the word of God says, how priceless is your failing love. Both high and low among men find refuge in the shadow of your wings. You know, we've listened to many presidents and prime ministers today. They're speaking about the situation they're facing. I think it's difficult for many of them to put in the word God appropriately where the word God belongs. They're looking at the problem they're running around and they're wondering what is it that they should do. But what they need to know is that the time has come for them, kings and princes alike, to know that it is the shadow of the Almighty, the shadow that can save, the shadow that can make a way for them in their countries. They need to declare that. They need to make it plain. They need to speak it out. They can't hide anywhere because it is only the shadow of the Almighty that can protect in a time like this. 
In Psalm 57, verse 1 b, the word of God says, and that's the psalm is speaking, I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. There is a disaster out there, beloved. There is a shadow of death that is prowling all over the place. This shadow doesn't know the prime minister. It doesn't know a president. And it doesn't care for the kind of house you live in, whether it's a white house or a blue house. This shadow is the shadow of death. But there is a shadow of the Almighty that can deal with it. That's why in Psalm 63 verse 7, the Bible says, Because you are my help, that's the psalmist speaking, I sing in the shadow of your wings. In Isaiah 49 verse 2b, the word of God says, In the shadow of his hand he hid me. In Isaiah 51 verse 16, God himself speaking, saying, I have put my words in your mouth and covered you with the shadow of my hand. It's only God that we can call on to be our hiding place in a time such as this. And I tell you, beloved, our God is a faithful God. But having said this, we must also recognize as children of God, as people walk in the face of the earth, we are like fading and shifting shadows. This point is captured in Psalm 144 verse 4 and in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 12. A fading and shifting shadow. Why? Because our time on earth is limited. The only shadow that is not shifting, the only shadow that is permanent, the only shadow that can help is Christ himself. And that's what the word of God says about the Lord Jesus Christ in James chapter 1 verse 17. It reminds us that Christ is not a shifting shadow. That's what James reminds us of. In Matthew 17 verse 5, in Mark 9 7, and in Luke 9 34, we see the Bible capturing the story regarding where the Lord Jesus Christ took Peter, James, and John to the Mount of Transfiguration. And while they were there, all of a sudden, the shadow of the Almighty appeared and it covered the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the shadow of his glory. The shadow of his glory. The shadow under which we can hide. And that's why Peter, who likes to speak a bit, had said, hmm, Lord, why do you want us to leave this place? Why don't we build tabernacles here for the three of you? One for Moses, one for Elijah, one for yourself. Let's just abide under this shadow. Where else do we want to go? In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 1 to 3, at the dedication of Solomon's temple, just as you know, the processes and the prayers were coming to an end, the shadow of God showed up. And the Bible says the power of the shadow was so much that even the ministers, the priests, could no longer minister. That's what happens when the shadow of the Almighty is in our midst. And that's why Peter wanted to stay in that shadow permanently. Beloved, let's aim for the shadow that does not fade. Let's aim for the shadow that Lord Jesus Christ has made possible. As we gather in our homes today, as we gather as a church of Christ, beloved, let's ask God to move the shadow of death away from our lands. Let's ask the Lord to hide us in the shadow of his wings, as we see in Psalm 17 verse 8. Let's plead the blood of his son on our doorpost. Let's plead the blood of the one that brought light to those who have lived in the land of the shadow of death. Let's ask the Lord to watch over the frontline workers. Many of those workers are in our church. Let's ask the Lord to watch over them. Let's ask the Lord to keep our focus on the shadow that does not fade. Shall we pray? Glorious Father, we just want to thank you and appreciate you for this special day. Lord, we honor and adore you and we bless your holy name. 
We thank you for the word of God that reminds us that there's a shadow that does not fail, that does not fade, a shadow of refuge, a shadow of protection. Thank you, Lord, for the shadow of the Almighty. Where will we be at a point like this? And so, glorious Father, even as the shadow of death, the corona parades all over the streets and the places, and people are scared, we call on you, Lord Jesus. Be our shadow at this point. The shadow of the Almighty, cover us. Cover us under your arms and wings. Cover us totally, Lord God Almighty. Protect us continually. Protect all that you have given to us. Protect the body of Christ. Let your protection touch our neighbors. That they may see in you that Jesus is loved. We honor and worship and appreciate you. And we say, blessed be your holy name. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we prepare our hearts for the communion table, let us pray. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for your death on the cross. We want to thank you for your body that was broken for us and your blood that was shed for us. Thank you for today that we can remember this great sacrificial work you did for us to hide us in, under your tent, to hide us in the shadow of your wings eternally secured and protected. We want to thank you for the bread, the common element, and the grape juice, the common element which you have pointed us to, to speak of these big truths about our salvation, about our walk with you. The bread representing your body broken for us and the grape juice representing your blood that was shed for us. So we pray, Lord Jesus, that as we partake of these elements, you will help us by your grace to receive in faith the benefits for which you died, the benefits for which your blood was shed. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Lord Jesus, we pray that we may always run to you for forgiveness, for we know that your blood cleanses us from all sin. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that by your stripes we are healed. We are healed of our greatest sin disease. Help us to run to the cross. For our forgiveness. In Jesus name. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Please do take the bread and distribute among your family members as we partake of the Lord. of the same chapter says in the same way he took the cup also after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Please do distribute the cup amongst your family members and partake in remembrance of the Lord. Thank you for the ministry of your word. Thank you for the reminder that we can come to you for protection. Thank you, Lord, that you are our hiding place. We can dwell in your presence instead of dwelling in the presence of our enemies. We dwell in your presence, you being our shelter you being our shadow, you being our protector. And thank you, Lord, that the blood of Jesus Christ, your son, cleanses us from all sin. And we are protected. 
we are going to hide under the blood of Jesus where the devil will do us no harm. No harm, no harm. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Honor your Son, Jesus Christ, through your word, even as you dwell in our midst. Now, as we bring our service to the end, shall we receive the benediction from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 to 21. Ephesians 3, verse 20 to 21 is our benediction for today. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen.